Welcome to this class on uh, neuroscience of human movement. So, this is part 12 of our discussion on uh, primary motor cortex. So, we have been discussing uh, recently about lesions and uh, how the motor map is dynamic, how plasticity can be helpful or the possible role or possible exciting role of uh, plasticity in improving brain function or improving motor function in people with compromised uh, systems. Another way to help patients with uh, neuromotor disorders is brain machine interfaces. So, if you go to uh, neuroscience conferences, there is this regular neuroscience that uh, gets discussed in the regular neuroscience sessions and then uh, you go to the neuroprosthetics nano symposium for example, in society for neuroscience meetings. right? It is hot, it is that uh, particular place that is absolutely glamorous, it is that place where you know these individuals are going to stand and listen to talks. It is that uh, everywhere else there will be a lot of chairs that are free in any other nano symposium or symposium, mini symposium, any other talks there are going to be chairs that are going to be free because not every there, the, so that room is designed for uh, you know a larger audience, but usually just enough audience fill that room. But when it is neuroprosthetics, the room will be full, there will be people sitting on the floor and then there will be people standing on the floor. Why? Because this field is hot, super hot, right. The other topic uh, of interest is of course, neuroeconomics, I do not want to get into that. So, this topic is uh, neuroprosthetics and there are several components of uh, this uh, brain machine interfaces and how to perform signal analysis from brain machine interfaces. Fortunately, a substantial amount of uh, progress has been made within prosthetics, not necessarily in the movement generation field, but in a different field. This is in the prosthesis of the auditory system, for example, cochlear implants, substantial in my uh, limited view in my uh, humble view or in my limited reading, I believe that cochlear implants or auditory um, prosthesis has made substantial progress within the neuroprosthetics field. Signal processing algorithms are very advanced, instrumentation for measuring and for uh, implanting and for uh, uh, stimulating are very advanced are at a stage and it is very already commercially successful. When compared with other for example, we compare this with other forms of prosthesis, what are the other forms of prosthesis? Uh, movement related prosthesis or uh, you know for example, uh, eye you know relatively limited success, relatively limited uh, commercial success, relatively limited uh, establishment of algorithms and, uh, and instrumentation. However, in cochlear implants there has been tremendous su success. So, if we are to proceed at least in my uh, view, if we are to be successful in improving brain machine interfaces for movement, then we must learn the lessons from this field from cochlear implants. So, let us, but we are interested in this course on movements and improvement of movements. So, we will continue our discussion on how this can be achieved using brain machine interfaces. So, what is the goal? These are also called as uh, neural control interfaces. So, the goal is to develop prosthetic devices, right. It is possible for uh, a monkey, an animal to be conditioned, right. This was shown earlier much long ago by Ebb Fetz and his colleagues. Right. And it is also possible to come up with a specific uh, relationships between individual neuron or population uh, populations of neurons to particular movement. So, this particular movement is elicited by this population of neuron and this particular uh, for example, a population of uh, neurons encode the direction in which the movement is going to happen. We saw this uh, from the work of uh, Postulus Jajopoulos for example, and there are other things. It is also possible for us to you know perform mental rotations, right? mental rotations of the neuronal population vector, 
brilliant uh, study those who are interested must check that. So, it is possible to change all these things. So, a question is and a hot uh, topic is can I move or can I perform movement of a prosthetic limb or a robotic arm by mere thinking. So, I am thinking like I am going to move and let us suppose some electrodes or uh, recording electrodes are implanted in my brain and they could record the activity and perform movements using a robotic arm. The answer is yes, uh, technology is available today to convert thoughts into actions. Right. So, that is what this monkey is here is uh, doing. So, here is the monkey that is uh, seeing, right. it is seeing the activity, it is not uh, the monkey's hand, you see this is the robotic arm, this is the robotic arm, right. so these are the robotic arms. Right. So, the picking up of the treat for example, is achieved by the monkey by mere uh, thought, right. so with some training which this this is uh, this would give you the idea wow so this can be done so easily no there are several challenges along the way that have been overcome already before this monkey can actually achieve this that are not presented in this picture so those challenges that have been overcome are the lessons that have been learned have not been discussed as part of uh, this but at least the, the main result the core result is that it is possible to achieve what we want in terms of but why do we want that a question is why do we need that is it does it even have any meaning the answer is yes there are individuals who cannot make movements who cannot perform movements uh, even to communicate system movement system is completely compromised and we and they live for relatively long periods nowadays because of improved medical uh, care that is available that is good fortunately unfortunately they will have to live with the disease. So, then the question then the problem that is challenge that is presented to us as scientists is how do we improve their living conditions or how do we improve their quality of life. If we can produce devices, if we can produce devices that perform activities of daily living for these individuals, it is a huge step. What do I mean by activities of daily living? The basic activities such as buttoning up one's own shirt or such as uh, brushing your one's own teeth or such as uh, grooming oneself, right. Things that healthy normal individuals would take for granted, but for these individuals for individuals with compromised systems it is uh, a huge challenge and it is also greatly depressing for them when somebody else they have to depend on somebody else for drinking from a cup of uh, water and they have to depend on somebody else to come at a particular time, so they can brush and comb and dress themselves, huge difference. And by the way, there is also depression due to clinical factors. So, these individuals are having multiple problems, one is that they have a compromised system that is causing a deficit or a huge deficit in movements, the other is that this compromised system also causes you know clinical depression and the fact that they are not able to perform even simple activities of daily living they have to depend on somebody else to wash themselves or to use the restroom has huge implications for their mental health. And you know these individuals are going to live how do we improve their quality of life, what can we do that is the question. So, to, to that extent can we come up with devices which can um, provide them basic movements at least for example, buttoning one's own shirt unfortunately, buttoning one's own shirt as trivial as it may seem involves uh, you know relatively complicated mechanics, it is not a trivial problem, it is not like you could button your shirts with trivial mechanics, the mechanics involved uh, continues to be quite complicated. So, there are multiple challenges in this field, in the good old days or the first approach towards this was uh, towards uh, achieving uh, an acceptable prosthetic devices was performed uh, using mainly using EEG non invasive technique. Still being continued it is a hot uh, field uh, this is still being continued and uh, another approach was eye movements. Several challenges exist in these for example, EEG if you see is the activity that is recorded 
at the scalp level right there are about six layers from where the recording is uh, where the recording is made to where the actual activity is originating the activity the neural activity is originating in the brain but the recording is made at the scalp there are several things we know uh, we know what is between the scalp there is scalp skull dura mater pia mater subarachnoid matter cerebrospinal fluid then the surface of uh, the cortex and then the activity may be deep if it is too deep then eeg may not be able to pick up so there are several challenges yet advanced signal processing algorithms are uh, available to classify this but from these can we perform relatively complicated movements um, it's an open question uh, this rem uh, this is an open question similarly with eye movements there are multiple uh, artifacts that could uh, happen either with the uh, eeg or with eye movements multiple challenges exist in terms of uh, how to use this for uh, you know real practical brain machine interfaces so uh, that is a huge challenge people there are groups of people who are studying these and improving algorithms improving instrumentation in these fields but the hard field is uh, the following can we record directly from the cortex there has been substantial improvement in the microelectrode technology so we could implant you know electrodes in the cortex and uh, record population activity from multiple neurons and then use relatively advanced algorithms that can extract signals about the exact motor intention what do you want to do it is not clear what the person wants to do i mean in a, in a healthy person that is clear what the person wants to do the person will do after the person does what they want to do you know you know that's what they wanted to do in the individual with compromised system they want to do something but nobody knows what they want to do so the intention decoding of that intention he is the challenge right the, so can we extract uh, the motor intention from the signals that are recorded that is one then this uh, intention must somehow be co converted into control signals that control mechanical interfaces is it not control signals to generate a, you know particular movements by an external mechanical effector and more in the real system in the intact system we have feedback from the sensory uh, system what are these we have said what these are these are proprioceptors uh, cutaneous receptors etc that are sensed by the uh, whose activity gives information about the external world to the primary somatosensory cortex so in these individuals it's possible that the sensory area is also uh, compromised so sensory feedback signals are very useful to improve performance so there there must be two loops one is sensing the other is actuation both of this must happen relatively advanced algorithms are required so that's that here is an uh, example uh, system or uh, a block diagram or a, or a rough Black diamond system. So this is a relatively uh, early system, so about 15 years ago. So the monkey's intentions are recorded. So from the so this is from implanted electrodes and from a relatively advanced data acquisition box. So these are the challenges that we will have to overcome. The system that we make must be portable, must still be very very uh, effective and have high uh, computational power. Is it not so must be able to execute uh, algorithms such as uh, artificial uh, neural networks and perform uh, fits maybe linear or non linear as the case may be and then uh, predict make uh, you know real time predictions that are then converted into actions by this robotic arm this is multi degree of freedom robotic arm that is present and this position and velocity is fed back to the monkey so the monkey is seeing what uh, what is being done and it wants to learn to move the actual robot up all this we want to happen most important word real time now we have been somewhat successful in, uh, in achieving this but not super successful there are still challenges 
challenges exist in you know reducing size challenges exist in improving computational efficiency challenges exist in uh, in instrumentation challenges exist in uh, signal processing most importantly challenges exist in making these systems affordable unless this system is going to be useful to a relatively large number of people these systems will continue to remain in uh, scientific uh, in the scientific uh, papers but not necessarily in the hands of individuals how do we make these systems affordable and help people are we doing this to wh why are we doing this i would uh, i would presume that we are doing this to help people if we are doing this to help people the goal is to make them affordable and practical and practically useful so it shouldn't be so difficult that nobody wants to use it nor it should be too simple that it has no practical application so that uh, trade off that sweet spot is difficult to achieve that is the reason why there is less commercial success of these systems when compared with uh, for example cochlear implants cochlear implants are relatively successful commercially when compared with say you know movement prosthesis why from time to time we see this exciting youtube videos that show oh here is uh, you know a robot that is moving by mere thinking yeah those things are cool but is are these things being used by individuals who need it are these things commercially viable and sustainable as an option that continues to be the question and that is a, one area where people like us can contribute so in this class we have seen uh, what is a brain machine interface and uh, discuss some aspects of brain machine interface what are the components and uh, how to obtain uh, neuronal signals how is this obtained nowadays from uh, implanted electrodes by the way the, with implanted electrodes there are challenges okay so with this we come to the end of this class so thank you very much